On Thursday, April 21st, the verdict was in for Senator Mike Duffy. Full acquittal by Ontario Court Justice Charles Vaillancourt on 31 charges related to fraud, breach of trust, and most significantly, bribery. I've been at this some 44 years, and I don't think I've ever been witness such a resounding acquittal. I mean, there are near misses and close calls. Justice Valancourt made plain uh, this was a resounding not guilty. And this wasn't just a technical acquittal after three years of the highest profile Senate expense scandal that gripped much of the nation's political attention. To many, the judge's ruling was the moral exoneration of Duffy's character after having, quote, fallen victim to unclear Senate rules and the sinister tactics of the Prime Minister's office under that former Conservative PM. I told Mr. Duffy in February that he should be repaying expenses that I simply thought were not justifiable. I would say that Senator Duffy has been subjected for the last two and a half, three years to more public humiliation than probably any Canadian in history. It would appear that Justice Vaillancourt was of similar mind, establishing Duffy as, quote, a credible witness at the outset of court proceedings, taking apart the Crown's case piece by piece, stating that it had failed to prove Duffy's guilt beyond reasonable doubt, and dismissing charges related to questionable residency and travel claims, all in a 308-page ruling. Huffington Post's Althea Raj reports. And then he went through uh, the, the three uh, charges with re that relate to that famous $90,000 check. Uh, he talked about the email traffic that had been produced at trial, and we'll recall that Nigel Wright had taken the stand and several other members of the Prime Minister's office. The judge said he believes Duffy's versions of events, which are that he was essentially uh, kind of like a pawn in this uh, whole scenario that he uh, really had no choice but to go along with what the Prime Minister's office wanted. To him, it would make more sense if it was Mr. Wright, Mr. Harper, the former Prime Minister, the Conservative Party, and the Prime Minister's office uh, who would have been charged rather than um, Mr. Duffy. That's sort of what he suggested at the end of his judgment. With Vion Kuhl's fiery indictment of Harper and his operatives, the tables had turned entirely in Duffy's favor, a fate that some would say the former PMO brought on itself. And the, um, the kind of weapon that they had polished, which was Duffy by putting him in the Senate and sending him all around the country to attack their opposition and to build them up, got turned against the... The Real News has been in conversation with author and journalist Rick Salutin, both in the weeks leading up to the verdict, as well as in its aftermath via Skype. We previously sat down with him to discuss the senator at the core of the saga. Well, there was Duffy, who'd spent a career as a real phony, a mm -hmm. phony populist man of the people, like, mo like not just most, like all right-wing populists basically claiming to have the guts to stick it to power and say unacceptable things, but really just mouthing um, things that any banker would be totally comfortable with. So he was an arch hypocrite all along, and he was shameful. He was a shame. He was a disgrace. Hello, I'm Mike Duffy, inviting you to join me tomorrow at noon here on CGOH for Sunday edition. Bad as journalism is, he disgraced it and dragged it down even further throughout his career as a um, total um, psychophant to power. And then he found himself in this amazing position where... Um, he, he was no longer living a lie. The claim that he was the little guy standing up to power had become true. And he did actually help bring the government down. He did serve his purpose historically, that's for sure. And with the judge having shifted scrutiny from Duffy to the PMO under Harper, would this mean that he and Nigel Wright may be exposed to criminal liability? I, I don't think we should be too obsessed with what happens in courts. You know, I think that's the result of us having watched courtroom dramas on TV since we were all born. And we think that it's a really important venue. Actually, I think it's just, um, it's a minority taste what happens in courts. And, but I think in the, on the public stage, it's quite significant um, and satisfying as a denouement to the Harper years. This judge really went out of his way to exonerate Duffy Maybe he's been a Duffy fan all his life. Duff, many Canadians have grown up with Duffy. That's possible. On the other hand, 
the fact that Harper did everything he could to Americanize the Canadian ju um, judiciary really went out of his way, appointed Supreme Court justices along the Scalia lines. Um, and I think there was a lot of resentment of that in the Canadian judiciary, who are essentially very conservative people. But they didn't like that. And it made me wonder watching this. Uh, one, we know that judges talk to each other. And they have dinner parties and they get very specific about cases and gossip. Who knows how much resentment there really was about what Harper was trying to do to the Canadian judicial system to make it like the American one where it's been totally um, politicized. No matter where one stands with respect to Duffy's culpability, one thing has been clear from the very start, that the Duffy scandal has never been much about Duffy alone or any of the individual senators in question. It has shown a light on the actors and structures that prop them up. And though Justice Fayoncourt shut down the broader political debate around the Senate as an institution right off the bat Thursday morning, the debate is old news. Abolish it. Turn it into a new arena for the other Ottawa senators. But do something. Just get rid of it. Ah, the Senate. It's been another brutal week for the... We asked Rick what struck him about the Senate's inner workings in connection with the scandal of the past few years. Well, you know, what's weird about the, the Senate in connection with, um, you know, dirty money um, uh, drowning and soiling uh, the Canadian body politic is the Senate was actually, has, has traditionally been the sinkhole of all of this financing. Not in the sense that they were writing, you know, baloney expenses, which they were, but that the Senate is where the parties always placed their bagmen. And uh, what you got for raising huge amounts of money from um, Bay Street and from the banks in, uh, for the parties was, in return, you got a seat in the Senate and you got to be called senator and you got to be treated seriously for the first time in your life instead of just some sleazy guy who could go around and collect money. And it's the role of money in, po in politics short of actually trying to um, alter the entire economic system we live under. The question is the one that Sanders raises in the U.S. of campaign financing. And strangely, we had been on the road to um, some improvement of that before the Harper government. There was Jean Chrétien, who was a gutless liberal prime minister, did uh, did two good things. One is he stayed out of the war in Iraq, and the other was he brought in campaign financing through public funds. So, that the, And I think that was because he'd spent his life as a corrupt, financed politician, and there was something in him that, uh, that, that revol was revolted by that. So we had, you know, the beginnings of decent campaign finance reform in the late 90s, uh, and Harper smashed it. A and then you're back to this ugly, ugly um, system of raising money, which is actually what Duffy and Pamela Wallen specialized in. As for the impact the Duffy verdict will have on the other senators implicated in the expense scandal or the new senators of the Trudeau era, well, that all remains to be seen. I, I think it's been a real uh, a shot across the, the bows of the senators. Um, so I'm, I'm actually, I, I think they're going to be scurrying for cover for a while yet. For the Real News Network, Shariel Tajvidi, Toronto.